Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. This program is supported in part by a grant from the BNSF Railway Foundation, dedicated to improving the general welfare and quality of life in communities throughout the BNSF Railway Service Area. Proud to support Wyoming PBS. And in part by the Wyoming Public Television Endowment and viewers like you. I'm Craig Blumenshine, Public Affairs Producer here at Wyoming PBS. We're in the historic Governor's Mansion here in Cheyenne in the library and it's our privilege and our honor to be with the governor-elect who will become the 33rd governor of the state of Wyoming, Treasurer Mark Gordon and his wife Jenny. Welcome both of you to this special Capital Outlook. Oh, it's wonderful to be here, Craig. Thanks. How um, long ago does March seem when you announced your, your election? Uh, it seems a long time ago. Uh, it, it's amazing. We, we drove over 60,000 miles. I was calculating that in oil changes. Is that <laughs> maybe a dozen oil changes? Yeah, and, no, we, yeah actually, uh, the, the guy here in Cheyenne, the grease monkey, uh, he knows exactly <laughs> how many oil changes. <laughs> so. you, um, you were a part of the campaign announcement, Jenny, and you um, gave a very assertive and confident endorsement of, of your husband. Was the campaign, was the campaign trail what you thought it would be? Um, yes and no. I knew it was going to be long and grueling, and, um, but I didn't expect all the fun things we would do and, and all the nice people would meet and areas I'd never been to in the state. So that was really interesting. And what struck you most about the campaign? It, it seems to me it was two different campaigns. It was the primary campaign, very different what then became of the general election campaign. And you, from your perspective, Mr. Treasurer, what was different? Well, I think the uh, primary campaign uh, was obviously much fuller uh, with lots of different candidates, uh, and it was a it was a very grueling uh, kind of campaign. Lots of debates, lots of different audiences. Uh, it was summer, uh, and so I could focus a lot on the campaign. After that, uh, between the primary and the general. I think uh, we were concentrating a lot more on my day job, the treasurer's role, uh, and so you kind of have to switch gears, uh, get to do the treasurer's job and then get ready to go back out on the road and campaign. One of the thing that I, things that I notice is that um, some maybe incorrectly guess that you would maybe not engage as much during the general election season. You participated in a lot of debates all over the state. <laughs> was, is that by des design or did it just happen or did you want to, did you want to make that imp important to your campaign? Well, I think actually there were 19 different debates uh, between the, the, the primary and the general. You, you know, I guess I grew up on a ranch and if there was a job to do, uh, I, I felt it was important to do. We never wanted to let down uh, in, in the campaign. This is an important race for Wyoming, uh, and we felt that the people of Wyoming deserved somebody that was on time and on, on the point. So, Jenny, you um, followed him along much of the campaign. Um, what was your role? What did you perceive your role to be when you were out stumping? Well, just being by his side, supporting him, and making sure that we put our best foot forward for the state and got to meet as many people and, um, you know, make an impression on them as we could. Yeah. Well, I'm in such a different state, as, as, as you well know. There's, there's um, real prosperous pockets of Wyoming and parts of Wyoming that, that maybe aren't doing so well right now. What did you, what did you take when you visited maybe those, those areas of the state that maybe aren't doing quite as well as you hoped? would hope them to be, Mr. Treasurer? Well, um, you know, I grew up in a little town, Casey, Wyoming, and uh, time doesn't change a lot there. It's a wonderful place, and people, uh, you, you know, know how to make a community prosper and, and work. Uh, and if you go around Wyoming, I think that's a common thread that you pick up, is that people are really invested in their communities. I think uh, what we took away, or what I took away, uh, was we need to make sure that Wyoming uh, gives our local communities all the resources it needs to do uh, more for itself, to grow uh, and prosper on its own. 
I want to take you back three years now, almost three years to the day, uh, Mr. Treasurer, when you were working your last day in the Capitol before you were booted out's the wrong word, but asked to leave <laughs> as it was getting renovated. Um, and here's what you said. You said, on Friday, I left my office in the Wyoming Capitol for the last time. I am the last treasurer to occupy that room. The office in the old Capitol, 125 years of tradition. No wonder I'm feeling the weight of that legacy. Is that weight a little different now, today? Uh, well, I still feel that weight. I, I feel that weight tremendously because uh, it, it, and it is interesting, the old Capitol was such a wonderful place with a great feeling to it. Uh, and after I wrote that, uh, several people came up to me and said, you've done a great job of capturing the camaraderie that was in that building. And it, you, you know, now I think the challenge is how do we bring the renovations that are important, that were important to do, the accessibility, the transparency. You expressed concerns in that letter exactly. about exactly that. Are you confident that it will become that place again? Well, I think that's the challenge uh, because the people of Wyoming, uh, really, we have a remarkable uh, government and uh, we are a citizen legislature uh, and, and it's important that we have that kind of camaraderie and friendship. So yes, I feel that tremendously. Jenny, how, um, how did you react or when did between you two, the, the conversation of, I'm, I'm treasurer now and I might want to be governor. When, <laughs> when, when did that come about at, in the, at the dinner table? Well, And you can be honest now, <laughs> because we've already announced, we've been through the election, you can well, really okay. let us know. Good to know. <laughs> um, no, you know, we had talked a little bit about it um, after Mark was uh, elected the second time, just what we wanted to do for our future. You know, we have the ranch and and kids that are grown, and so... Um, and a grandchild on the way, is it okay to say that? <laughs> yes. yes. Congratulations <laughs> Thank you, that. thank mm -hmm. you. So, yeah, you know, I, and uh, it just started to crystallize more, um, I guess, a year ago in the summer. And, uh, and once we made the decision, we just kind of jumped into it and found a good team and went forth. Any, um, any interpretation as the campaign started or that decision was made, or was it all systems go? I think it was pretty much all systems go. We had talked quite a bit about it, and I think both of us, uh, you know, feel so strongly about the future of the state. A little bit different approaches to, to the way we look at things, but, uh, you know, once you make that decision, it's important to go at it full speed and make sure it happens. And talk about your campaign just a little bit. Um, Jenny, you're a self-described science numbers person. Um, do you react in the campaign by gut? Are you driven by data tables and numbers? Or how did this work? How were you decided where you were going to go and what, who were you going to talk to and all of those things? Which, how did that all come about? Or were you told by the, the folks that are inside <laughs> of the room here just where to be? Well, I think we set the tone for the campaign by saying that we wanted it to be a clean campaign. We want to make sure everything was above board and that we represented who we were. And once everyone was involved and had that mission going forward, they just filled in all the little blanks for us. But um, we set the tone to make sure it was a clean campaign. And, you know, Craig, I'd say it's, it, I never knew my grandparents, but my my dad came here in 1932, and he was in Du Bois. And so the people that were sort of my grandparents were Charlie and Mary and Moore, who had the CM Ranch for a long time. Uh, you know, Manville Kendrick, John Kendrick's uh, son, was kind of a mentor. And I can remember hearing the stories about, uh, you, you know, the, the, the cowboys and the open range. Uh, people that were neighbors uh, came here in, in uh, covered wagons. So, so I grew up with a lot of that. And then my family, uh, we, we worked hard for Tom Strook's campaign and for Malcolm Wallop's campaign. And so that fabric of what makes Wyoming tick has been part of, I guess, m my life growing up. And we just managed to talk to a number of really great people, Al Simpson and, um, you know, John Wold's son, Peter Wold, who chaired our campaign, Gail Geringer, and, and put together a great team. We felt we had a good message. You um, have spent a lot of time, Jenny, at the ranch. Yes. How will that work now that you're going to have more responsibilities as 
Wyoming's First Lady? Well, we have a great crew on both of our ranches and their self-starters. They're ready to step up. And so we're going to transition them more into the management, have hired um, some people to do some replacement. And then I still want to be involved in the management. And I love to work in the crowd. I can't lie. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be trips to the ranch every day. Yeah, yeah gotta, gotta what, get the cows. What do you view your role now, though, as First Lady? What, what, what do you believe is now your responsibility? Well, probably first and foremost to be there for my husband, to support him, and because it's going to be a big, tough job. And then I would love to be able to listen to the people of Wyoming and, and see what needs there are and if there's any way I can help, you know, bring certain causes to light and, and help certain organizations that, you know, that, that are good for the state. I would love to be able to be a part of that. Last night, um, and I should tell our audience that we're filming this just the day after the election. It hasn't even been 24 hours. That's true. Um, but you were very gracious to Mary Throne in your acceptance speech or in your speech um, acknowledging your, your election. You called her a colleague and a friend. Um, and I, from those of us that were watching the campaign, that was a, a good relationship for us to, to watch. Um, what, are, what were your thoughts as the campaign winded down here with the um, issues that, that she brought forward and kind of held you to the fire in, in, a, in a very good-natured way to talk about? Well, I, um, Craig, as, as I say, I think there are differences of opinion and uh, differences of approach, and I thought Mary did a, a, a good job of bringing forward the way she uh, thought that we could solve those problems, and I had a different, a different approach. Uh, she's still a person who loves this, loves this state, has dedicated a lot of time to it, and is a good person, uh, and, and so um, you know, I think that's what makes Wyoming such a wonderful place, is that we can disagree on policy matters, uh, and uh, yet we can do that with some civility. And I think that's really important in these times. Give us a sense that from old timers like me, who you saw on the campaign trail, to millennials, were there messages about Wyoming the same? Were they different? Um, were they a cause for concern? Did you reach the younger folks as well as you would have liked during the campaign? Well, I think so. Um, you, you know, as I, we have kids that are in their 30s, and, and uh, you, you know, we had a lot of college Republicans that were engaged in the campaign. And, and as I talk to people of the younger generation, I sort of hate the term millennial, but, uh, you, you know, young as folks. As much as I hate the term old time. <laughs> <Well, I>, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, what, what I think resonates is um, people want to have opportunity. Uh, they don't want to necessarily have a lot of regulations, a lot of people telling them what to do or things that they just can't achieve. They, they want to have those opportunities and find a place to grow and, and, and make a difference. Uh, and there is no place like Wyoming that can, you can do that. So as you talked about young families, uh, I think the conversations we had about how Wyoming's education is so important because that's what is going to keep those young families here. And those enterprising uh, people that are going to want to start building businesses is what we did in the 80s. Uh, and I think with, with uh, uh, more mature folks <laughs> like <go>. like myself, <laughs> uh, you know. I hope we resonated that there is a, there's a, there's a sense of continuity and and a sense of uh, fiscal stewardship that that's going to carry through. Uh, so there, I think there's a belief in the future that can be common. Jenny, sometimes young women maybe not don't feel that they have the voice um, when people are running and, and, and are able to visit with folks. Did you hear a different message from young women versus young men during the campaign? Oh, not, not that I remember. Uh -huh. um, met a lot of really neat young women. Um, one that comes to mind is a little gal who just turned 19. She came to our celebration yesterday. Um, Autumn is her name from Torrington, and she is just really amazing. And she is one of those kids who is going to take the world by storm because she had she asked better questions than the reporter did. <laughs> so um, yeah, just there's a, I, I didn't see a lot of difference that way, but I think they're all just really engaged and just want to have a future. Continuing to talk maybe a little bit about Wyoming's future, um, <clears throat> Mr. Treasurer, you're actively involved in Endow, and I've mm -hmm. said during the campaign you want to continue looking at the best ideas that, that come from the group. 
One of the posts that, that has struck me as interesting that Endow put out a few months ago was that it envisions two Wyoming communities with a population of 100,000 by 2038. And I contrast that to some folks who love Wyoming the way it is. <laughs> First of all, do you see that? Do you see Wyoming maybe growing like that with a couple significant population centers coming our way? Um, Craig, I think that's a distinct possibility. I'm not sure that government wants to drive that sort of solution. I mean, you just referenced the fact that we all love the Wyoming we grew up in. It's a, it's a place where we know one another, where um, you can call a friend in another town and know who that is. Uh, and I think as Wyoming grows, and I think it will grow, certainly one of the things we want to work on is making sure our economy gets stronger. And as I look at our neighboring states with all of their pressing needs and their concerns, I think Wyoming is going to be a great place to come to. Um, but, but I think they should grow on their own terms. And, and I think growth on Wyoming's terms is certainly a historic kind of notion that we've had and one that I carry forward. Jenny, do you see that for Wyoming? Do you see a couple hundred thousand base population towns? Wow, that's hard to believe. <laughs> it is kind yeah, of, isn't it? Just, um, you know, especially coming from Buffalo, you know, smaller towns. Um, yeah, but I think whatever the state does, I hope they do it thoughtfully and make sure that we, you know, have the right um, things around us and, and good government. One of the things that, that I often wonder about is the challenges that Wyoming has to serve rural Wyoming where You've spent so much of your time, and when you think of a statement like two communities of 100,000, does that also equate to those essential services um, kind of coming to those places and making it even more difficult indirectly to serve rural Wyoming? That's, I think, one of my big concerns, and that's why uh, I, I think it's great when communities can grow, uh, but, but I'd like to see it more uniformly growing across the state. Uh, Wyoming has so many great places to live. Uh, that, that simply just trying to focus on, you know, I would think probably the ones that would be most likely would be like a Casper or a Cheyenne, and I think Cheyenne's going to grow uh, a lot. But, but it does concentrate those, those services and makes it harder for uh, towns like Lusk uh, or Newcastle mm -hmm. to, to prosper. And to, to maybe plan for its future. And yeah. plan for the future, yeah. We'll get into the details of policy during our capital outlook season, Mr. Treasurer, and, and we'll look forward to visiting with you more about that. But I want to touch on some policy issues briefly. Mm -hmm. um, um, you've been very clear that you do not believe that now is the time that Wyoming should raise taxes. But my question is, um, how should tax structure be included in your planning? Should Wyoming in the future maybe have another bust that is fairly significant? Well, Craig, and I think over the years, you and I have talked a couple of times about uh, the, the great uh, sort of nest egg that Wyoming has uh, and how we manage that to sort of help to uh, transition to a more stable fiscal future. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting that the investment income this year was the number one source for the general fund and you've, revenues. You've, I'll touch on that just for a minute, too, because... That kind of scares you in one way of using real, um, realized capital gains instead of saving. Is that hard for you to watch? Or? It, it, it is hard uh, for me to watch. And I know some legislators have said, well, you're the treasurer now. You'll have a different frame of reference uh, as governor. Uh, and I hope that's not true, because I think the most important thing is that we build a great state for, for our future. And I think that we do have some opportunities to get from here to there. What I have said, Craig, is that uh, you know the Endow Initiative has really talked about let's look at this tax structure, uh, and and I think there will be opportunities to have that discussion. I just don't believe that taxes are critical at this point. I think there are more things that we can do to to really stabilize our economy going forward. Um, Representative Brown and I had a discussion, and it was in the context of, of leadership and. And, he, and I asked him this. I asked him, who should be leading the charge in making change for Wyoming? And his response was, well, the regis legislature will pay, play a role in making difficult decisions. He said that a new administration after 2018, now your administration, will need to take a leadership role guiding Wyoming in its next steps. What is that relationship between your vision and the legislature's vision? Um, and who is out front? on difficult issues? Is it 
the interim committee meetings at the legislature who bring policy forward, or is it the governor? I think it's a combination. I, I guess, uh, in my view, and I've, I've articulated this a couple of times over the last few years, and, and I feel very strongly about this. When you're a legislator, you are elected by uh, your district, the people in your district. Uh, you're meant to represent them. And of course, as you work up through the leadership structure, you do have a bigger view. But you're still only elected by that group of people that uh, are in your district. Uh, and when you're running for a statewide office, uh, and I, I, I couldn't articulate this any more clearly than just the race we've gone through, you, you feel the, the obligation to every corner of the state. Uh, and, and so I think in that tension, and of course there's the executive and there's the legislative branch, but in that tension, uh, I think that's where the great opportunities lie. So I think it's incumbent on a governor to lead, uh, and, and I'd love to see the legislature follow, but I think the, the value is in that conversation, in that dialogue about where we go as a state. I want to touch on when that doesn't happen here in just a minute, but what happens when that doesn't happen at the dinner table? When <laughs> the policy issues maybe get debated, um, you know, across the, the nice steak and um, you two disagree? Well, of course I'm always right, so that makes it so much easier. Uh, is that true, Mr. Treasurer? Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> it is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think that having a healthy conversation is really important, and that's one thing that I always have admired about Marcus. He will listen and um, take things into consideration. And do you give him input? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. About issues like education and healthcare, and, mm -hmm. and yes, and important issues. Yes, and I come from a healthcare background. Mm -hmm. I worked in a hospital for quite a few years, and so that's something that's really important to me as well. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute because it's important to a lot of Wyomingites who, um, for whatever reason, may not have the access to healthcare that they used to have, um, may feel that they can't afford healthcare. Um, you've talked about it in your campaign, maybe trying to find what other states are doing to help, mm -hmm. but it sure seems to me like there's no silver bullet from the state level how does that impact your thinking? Well, I don't think there's a silver bullet. I think there are a combination of things that we can do. Uh, and, and uh, you know, as I've talked about during the campaign, the, the waivers that are the 1332 waivers give us some opportunities. The legislature's obviously taking a look at some of those things. I think Wyoming, uh, being a fairly small state, really does have opportunities that a larger system may not. Uh, and I think if we are able to get a, uh, a good dialogue going in the legislature that is really focused on finding solutions rather than just arguing, uh, I think we'll have a way forward. Is that Wyoming's greatest challenge, um, coupled with the fact that we still have an aging population? It struck me that um, I've, I've seen different um, um, projections and charts from Endow's work, yet also some different charts about Medicaid and the and our aging population with significant fiscal um, um, you know, responsibilities of Wyoming. Is health care going to be our state's biggest responsibility, do you think? I think it's going to be an, an, an enormous challenge and one we have to get right. Uh, there are a couple of these challenges, education funding is another, that uh, it seems like we've marked time over the last couple of years. Uh, I would love to see uh, our uh, next couple of years really find the solutions. And it's going to take a lot of work. And Mr. Treasurer, let me interrupt together. you just a minute because I've already seen some legislators, legislators predict that the Craig report was a little better than we thought it would be. And we're going to get to kick this down the can down the road, so to speak, another couple of years. Is that your assessment? As, as, uh, as a treasurer who has been harping on the fact that the good times are times when we should be setting aside and planning for our future, you can mark my words that I'm going to be very um, insistent on let's solve the problems. Uh, let's not kick the can down the road. And I think these are going to take hard compromises. It's going to take a lot of work. That's something I um, appreciate and, and look forward to. And in the end, if we can say we have solved these problems, I'm fine with that. That'll be great. How will you measure your success? How will you measure his success? <laughs> is, that, is that the same answer? Well, I, you know, the way I would look at, at, at measuring uh, our success is by 
making some of these issues centerpiece and, and really working towards the solutions. Uh, and I do think, you know, in the case of, of, of medical care, uh, we are at a time when there are real opportunities for disruptors. Uh, and I think Wyoming can lead some of that disruption. We're a small state. We have, we'll have a very robust broadband connection. It'll give us a chance to try to put a human face on, on uh, you, you know, technology. And I really think there are some things we can do to make a difference. So progress towards those things, that's how I'd measure it. What's your answer, Jenny? Well, I guess I would say, to use your words, it, to look back and say we left this place a little better than we found it. And if we can say that, then I think we would have made progress. Oh, sure. There she goes again. <laughs> <laughs> Upstaging. <laughs> your life now will include a lot more receptions during the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about that? Maybe two or three in the evening? And, and when the, especially when this town's in session, there's, there's lots to do. Do you see that as part of your role to attend and support? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem I, I usually have is that I like to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and really get to know people so I don't flit around the room a lot. So I'm going to have to work on trying to make sure I visit with everyone. And you mentioned, um, uh, or at least it was mentioned at the start of your campaign, that this is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Yes. Do you feel more comfortable <laughs> as the campaign has went forward now? Yes, I do. I mean, it's always hard to put yourself out there, and I'm used to, I like to be in the back and get things done and, and be a hard worker, so being more out front is, is not my comfort zone, but um, I'm ready to take on the challenge. Well, Mr. Treasurer, we've been conducting this interview with a whole array of photos of former governors kind of <laughs> looking right at us. Which governors have, have made an impression on you from what you know about Wyoming's history? Oh, gosh. Um, you, you know, Stan Hathaway, obviously, working in the treasurer's office, the great leadership that he brought there. My sister was an intern when Cliff uh, Hansen was uh, in, in uh, the Senate, and, and so I've always remarked on, on Cliff's, uh, uh, you know, remarkable leadership uh, there as well. And, you know, obviously Jim Geringer and more recently, Dave Friedenthal, and then obviously Matt Mead. These are, these are all people that I think have brought our state forward into the future. Mr. Treasurer, it'll be great to watch you through this transition. And when you appear before the joint session of the legislature, not, not just but a few weeks from now in your first State of the State address. And uh, Mrs. Gordon, it's been a pleasure for us to get to know you during this campaign and here today. And, and we wish you both absolutely the best. And I think I speak for all of Wyoming and offering our congratulations to both of you. Thank well, thank you. you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on this special edition of Capital Outlook. Thanks very much. This program is supported in part by a grant from the BNSF Railway Foundation, dedicated to improving the general welfare and quality of life in communities throughout the BNSF Railway Service Area. Proud to support Wyoming PBS. And in part by the Wyoming Public Television Endowment and viewers like you.